I received many questions regarding the set of proportion 1 to 8. Um, so with this video, I would like to discuss this proportion, the, 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 the ratio of uh, 1 to 8, meaning the head will fit into the body a time, versus the 1 to 7.5, meaning the head will fit into the body 7.5 times. So um, this is um, uh, the chart that I, you will find in my basic human anatomy, uh, my book, Basic Human Anatomy. And um, I prefer to work with this um, set of proportion. I find them more practical, but I want to discuss also the um, uh, ratio one to eight. So this, the one to seven and a half is um, typical of the uh, early classical uh, convention, right? Uh, proportional relationship. And this instead, a little bit later, it's uh, the, uh, uh, relatable to the Hellenistic um, um, works. So let's see, um, let's go over all the various segments, right? And uh, uh, see how they compare with each other. So um, the head, as for the um, seven and a half, the head in one to eight is um, one measure, one eight, right? One eight of the whole um, um, measurement. Uh, the rib cage <coughs> is included in the measure of two heads, like for uh, the one to seven and a half, but in this case, the rib cage is bigger, as you can see. So the um, space between the chin and the jugular fossa is one third, like here, one third. But you can see the rib cage here uh, gets closer to the end of the third box, whereas this one here is about a quarter of a head. So in here, we're going to have uh, a quarter of a head, right? And in here, we just have one sixteen. So the rib cage proportionally bigger, still fits into the second and third um, uh, measure, right? But um, it's uh, a little bit deeper. The pelvis moves down about a quarter of a head. See that this is a quarter of a head, right? The height of the pelvis is still one head, right? As is in the one to seven and a half, it's still one head. So, uh, but instead of having the pelvis uh, contained in the fourth measure, this pelvis shifts down <coughs> about a quarter of a head, right? Therefore, the midpoint of the figure, right, um, is uh, um, at the fourth head, right? Whereas the midpoint into the uh, one to seven and a half is at the three and three quarters mark here, right? One, two, three, eight, three quarters mark. So therefore the pelvis, or the base of the pelvis in the one to seven and a half is flush with the measure of the fourth head. In this case, the base of the pelvis moves down a quarter of a head like that. So uh, the, <clears throat> Um, the knees, the measure of the knee, the, the articular plane of the knees here is not uh, at the one, one, two, three, four, five and a half, right? So it's five and a half heads, right? Measure of the five and a half heads is five and three quarters, a little bit lower like this, right? Um, we move down, um, the measurement of the feet, the height of the feet is one third like in this case in here. So um, let's now check more in detail the measurement of all these uh, um, uh, proportion, right? So the space between the chin and the jugular fossa is one third, right? Here. The space between the, actually, let's, let's look at this, right? So how do we find one third? Well, we have the scale here, right? I, I do the scale here, drawing a square and then dividing it in smaller and smaller square using the diagonals. The measurement of the third is going to be obtained by taking, um, you, uh, 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 connecting this corner with this point in here. The point of intersection between uh, the um, this 
line, this point here and this point in here, this line here and this line in here, right? Give me the measurement of one third. So this is one third, right? So let's see now how big is uh, this, right? We said it's one third and it's one third, right? Makes sense, right? So now this is one eight. Okay, we see if it is one eight. Actually, let's do this. Like we don't know what this is, right? So we're gonna find out. We have the scale here and that would be one eight, right? So now let's measure the rib cage. How big is the rib cage? All right, so from here to here, right? And this is the measurement one head down. This is clearly uh, more than one head, right? So from here to here is about, all right, one and um, 13, 16. It was just a strange measurement, right? One and 13, 16. But you don't want to remember one and 13, 16, right? Or one and five, 16, or so whatever that is, right? You want to remember that. <clears throat> Um, how do I find the measure of the ribcage then? Well, do this, do it directly. Uh, come down from the chin, one third of a head, or from the chin, uh, one eighth of a head for the posterior part to the ribcage. And uh, once you are down to the bottom of the third uh, measure here, come up one sixteenth or one eighth. It doesn't really make much of a difference. Right? Come up a little bit above the base of the uh, third box, right? Um, so therefore, um, um, now measuring from the um, uh, top of the fourth box, we come down one fourth, right? And then um, uh, of the head, and then we have the space between the top of the fourth box and the bottom of the pelvis. Now, depending if you want to use 116 or 18, you add this measurement in here, right? Um, to uh, this measuring here to find the distance between the base of the uh, rib cage, the bottom of the rib cage, and the top of the pelvis, right? The iliac spine, the pubic bones, these are all similar to the measurement uh, in the, um, the set to proportion one to seven and a half, meaning this is the upper quarter, right? Uh, this is the middle, and this is the lower quarter. So the pelvis can be um, divided in four um, equal segment horizontally, right? Along which I will position iliac spine and pubic bone, right? So um, the, the, then we see now the midpoint is is at the four heads. The uh, articular plane of the knees is at the five and three quarters. And then um, we have the measurement of the uh, ankle joint is one third up from the feet. So a quick, a quick uh, 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 comparison in terms of measuring the leg, right? In a, um, this type of um, visualization of the proportional relationship, we see using the one to seven and a half, we see that the um, segment of the <clears throat> Uh, the, 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 lo the lower leg, for example, right, is noticeably shorter than the femur, which is more accurate in what you would usually see in a, in a person, right? Meaning the segment of the limbs, right, or the, in this case, the leg, shorten um, as they get, they move away from, from the, the center. So this is two heads. This is one and two thirds and the foot extended like this is uh, one or one and one eight. So gradually shorting the second segment of the limbs as they move away from the center. The same thing is true for the segment of the uh, upper limb, the, the, the arm. In this case in here, in, instead, we see that if I measure from the articular joint, um, articular plane of the ankle and the articular plane of the knees, these two measurements are very, very similar. So I find this a little bit less accurate in terms of uh, uh, the organic aspect of the, the structural aspect of the skeleton. But still, um, it's um, that is uh, these are the proportion of the of the uh, one to uh, eight. I hope this was helpful. Let me know what you think about this.